Good evening. It's been an active Columbus Day this year, and it's going to continue to get active through the overnight hours. I'm meteorologist Jonathan Bellis. And I'm stream meteorologist Matthew Reagan. We've got a lot going on in our region, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, the center part of the country is really lit up with severe weather all across basically the Mississippi Valley, all the way from Texas up into the Great Lakes region. Yep, absolutely. We've had reports of tornadoes in many areas. We'll get to that in a little bit, but we've also got severe yep. weather. Yeah, there are currently seven areas where the Storm Prediction Center is watching for possible tornadic activity right now. Mm -hmm. And with all this uh, impacting the middle of the country, we'll find out if it's going to impact us. Yeah, just across the uh, Choctawatchee River this afternoon, there was a tornado over in Calhoun County right around the Scotts Ferry area in the last hour. Mm -hmm. This was a reported tornado and uh, was the first that we've seen out of this severe weather maker. Yeah, and there's a lot more coming during the overnight hours. Really not going to kick off until after sunrise tomorrow morning here locally, but there will be some rain moving in before that. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a plan ready for when severe weather also moves in. Yeah, this is going to be a couple of hours during the morning hours, uh, going into the early afternoon hours where we'll see some stronger winds, possibly upwards of severe limits or 60 miles an hour in some of these storms. Mm -hmm. And wind is also going to be a, a big factor in this uh, passing of this cold front as well. And we're also going to have quite a bit of rain as well. Uh, flash flood watch is in, a, in effect for Liberty, Gadsden, and Franklin counties. Yep, and for now we're going to send it out to Ian to tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Yes, it's definitely going to be an active uh, night for us here. Currently, right now, today's almanac said it was 85 degrees outside, so it was a bit on the warm side with a low at 70 degrees. But this will soon change as we have a cold front that is going to be making an impact on us overnight. Currently outside, we have 82 degrees. It's partly cloudy. You have those cloudy skies all day, but it's going to be cloudy, unfortunately, all tomorrow with that cold front on top of us. Dew point was around 66 with a 58% humidity with those winds out of the southeast. But like I said, it's going to change with that cold front coming through. Tonight, we have a, a cold front with bringing a good bit of severe weather, potentially, uh, as it crosses over us around 2 a.m. this morning. So we're definitely going to be hearing those storms tonight. Strong thunderstorms will continue on into tomorrow. So unfortunately, it's going to be a stormy day tomorrow. Good chance of rain, roughly 90%, so expect a lot of rain tomorrow with sunny skies on Wednesday. So once we get through that, you will be able to see sunny skies the rest of the week. But we are going to take it back to the desk with more on severe weather. Yeah, there has been quite a bit of damage across some of these states across the middle Mississippi Valley. Unfortunately, there is one person that died due to an EF2 tornado in Arkansas. Yep, that was a very unfortunate event, and tornadoes are uh, really sprouting up everywhere across yeah. this severe that front. happened this morning, and then later, uh, later early this morning, uh, at the University of Louisiana, there was a storm that hit there and caused quite a bit of damage there. Yep, there was a lot of wind damage um, associated with a lot of severe weather cells pushing into the university area. Yeah, power poles were knocked over and quite a bit of trees were knocked over. Uh, cl classes were canceled during the afternoon hours, but they will reopen at the University of Louisiana tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. or at least that's the plan right now. For the rest of Louisiana, there was a state of emergency put into place there for all of this severe weather. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a total of nine states that have already uh, had warnings or watches issued. Yeah, and many of those states have had uh, damage reports such as uh, high winds, 70 to 80 miles an hour, and a couple of tornadoes sprinkled in there as well. Mm -hmm. But for more on our local impacts here with severe weather, let's send it out to Brandon. Thanks, guys. We're watching a severe line making its way into our region t tonight and into tomorrow as well. We can uh, see that cold front uh, draped over to the east of us around that Mississippi, Louisiana uh, area right now. Uh, main threats are going to be heavy rain and gusty winds working their way in overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Taking a little closer look at home, though, nothing to, to speak of as far as uh, our neck of the woods goes. That was not the same uh, to our west about half an hour, 45 minutes ago. We had a severe weather or a severe uh, thunderstorm warning expire, as well as a tornado that was confirmed touchdown at that time. But both those uh, have continued to move on, and we can expect that to make its way into our region tonight. Taking a look over today, though, 82 degrees under partly cloudy skies, just about all day long. Kept the temperatures a little cool. We only hit 85, or we hit 85 today. Could have been a lot warmer if it wasn't for that cloud cover. Uh, but still well above average for this time of year. Now, taking a, again, taking a look at uh, that severe thunderstorm warning we saw, you can see those boxes that expired earlier. The red was the tornado warning that touched down uh, over the Chipola area, and uh, the severe thunderstorm warning is that box in yellow. And again, those are going to work their way eastward towards us in tonight and into tomorrow. Now, taking a look at the water vapor imagery, you can really see that front uh, lined up over the Mississippi Valley right now. 
that's going to continue to work its way eastward, and then the low pressure system behind it is going to lift northeastward throughout the day, and uh, we can expect a pretty significant severe chance tomorrow. Here, here that is illustrated right here on the future cast as I set that into motion. Uh, strong thunderstorms working its way out ahead of it, and then that's going to, uh, strong thunderstorms work their way, way in, clearing through by Wednesday morning, bringing sunny skies, high pressure in its wake, and a significant cool down for us as well. That's going to continue uh, well in, into the week ahead. Now, looking ahead more short term tonight, 57. The storms are going to be moving again after 2 a.m. And then the, uh, it's going to continue into tomorrow where we're going to see lots of thunder and significant winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour just about all day long. Now, looking out to the week ahead, uh, after that uh, storm moves through, 90% uh, chance of rain tomorrow. A little bit more lingering or, uh, Wednesday morning, about 20%. And then we're going to stay in, in the 80s just about all week long. And that's uh, going to stay the same through game day uh, on s Saturday, uh, well, well into the week ahead. We don't really foresee anything coming through uh, for the time being. Now we're going to toss it off to Ian for a toss around the southeast. Thank you, Brandon. It's an active day tonight and into tomorrow for much of the southeast. Currently, weather ahead of it is warm and a bit sunny, but behind it you can see all those clouds. Tupelo with 70 degrees, 81 in Montgomery. Definitely was a uh, cloudy and stormy day for much of the area, especially for the areas that saw the severe weather, which there were a good amount of uh, severe activity today. So. This weather will change as the day progresses into the night with that cold front moving on through. You can see a 24-hour temperature change shows not a whole lot difference for Florida, but towards our west in Texas, you can see that difference. Shreveport, it's not negative 7 degrees, so it was, has cooled off past this cold front. Negative, seven, negative 5 in Tupelo, minus 9 in Montgomery. That's more to do with the cloud cover. But you can see the story here with that cold front making a difference on the temperature for much of the area in the southeast. Rainfall shows that it got a, they got a good amount of rain in Shreveport, 1.64 inches, less, about a trace in New Orleans, 0.18 Montgomery. Ahead of this fr uh, front, not a whole lot of activity, but this will soon change as much rain is supposed to be brought with this cold front coming on through. So expect rain overnight, especially along um, western portions of Florida, and that will be continuing on to, into the day tomorrow. Radar shows this cold front here. You can see a good line of storms. This is a very, these are very strong thunderstorms bringing severe activity. This is what is to be expected as it continues to move towards the east. So this is a rather strong cold front. And you also have some fl suddenly flow bringing some more rain as they saw west of uh, Tallahassee today. So a good amount of rain is expected with this storm. Future cast shows that as we go on through the night, the strong thunderstorms will start Hearing, you'll start hearing some thunderstorms, especially in western portions of Florida. And as this cold front pushes off towards the east onto Tuesday, they will have sunnier skies. But rain is expected for tomorrow and into Wednesday. That's when you're going to get the nice, lovely weather behind this cold front. So expect cooler conditions for much of the southeast and a lot sunnier skies. So it's definitely something that's going to be welcomed as we move on into the week. Currently, the relative humidity shows that difference, too. We have 57 in Orlando, 62 in Tallahassee, with all that moisture towards our west due to a cloud cover. Tonight's forecast shows 75 degrees in Tallahassee. We have cooler temperatures behind this cold front. This is what's to be expected as it pushes off towards the east with those cooler temperatures behind the cold front. Looking into tomorrow's forecast, 83 in Tallahassee with stormy conditions. It's going to be a rainy day in much of the southeast. And into Florida, you can see rain is expected there as well. But we're going to send it back to the desk with more. Thank you, Ian. We definitely have a threat of rain around the area. And actually, in counties west of us, there's already a flood watch been posted. Yeah, for Liberty, Gadsden, and Franklin counties, there's a flash flood watch there for the possibility of two to four inches piling up rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And that flood watch has the possibility of extending into our area later on tonight. Yeah, we're, for the rest of the area, we're expecting uh, around one to three inches as these storms move through, and especially with that squall line as it passes around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one way you can definitely stay prepared and ahead of this 
this rain tomorrow is have your umbrella and your rain boots ready. And if thunder and lightning are really around, you should go inside. Yeah, but if there, some of these storms are going to have a, quite a bit of wind with them, which then the raincoat would be a little bit better than the umbrella. Mm -hmm. And some of these storms could have or have had hit a history of wind, wind 60 to sometimes 80 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. These wind threat is definitely here. But for more on the uh, what's going on in the national view, let's send it on out to Nikki. Hi there, how's it going? We're going to start things back off with the look around the nation right now. We actually could see right where we're seeing that warmer weather right now is in Tallahassee, 81, but that'll be changing as things move on into the picture. We actually see some cooler conditions off in the middle of the United States, but bringing things back home, we'll be seeing the cooler weather soon enough. We're going to go ahead and move right on into our 24-hour temperature change where you see where those changes of temperatures really happened. And that's associated a lot with this blue for the colder conditions and red for the warmer conditions. So you can see we had quite the drop of temperature as that front that our folks were talking about earlier passed on through. And the warmer weather is actually staying off to the north uh, western side of the United States. We're going to go ahead, though, and move over to the satellite and radar where you can see exactly what we were talking about earlier for much of the show, this big frontal passage that's made its way across much of the United States, is on its way to Tallahassee, bringing things back on home. Here's all the clouds associated with it. You can see that spin of the low as well as we put this into motion. This will be making its way into our area as the time does move on through. Now, the satellite and radar, look at this image. This is a terrific representation of this frontal passage that's moving into our area. You can see some of the southerly flow that was associated with the winds, bringing some moisture off the Gulf. But this bad boy is making its way on in and it will be impacting much of the areas in the southeast. So expect possibly a thunderstorm warning or two tomorrow. Definitely bring the raincoat if you are heading out tomorrow night. Bringing back on in though to our, our look around those low pressure system that's really spinning off this front, you can see the flow that's associated with it in this large, large strand of thunderstorms that is making its way into the area as well. This is just going in to tonight is when we'll start to see the rain in Tallahassee. But this front will also be continuing to push its way off to the east as the night continues and actually all throughout Tuesday as well. So Alabama, Georgia areas are not out of the picture. They'll be seeing the rain tomorrow along with much of Florida. Now our airport delays, we're also seeing some delays actually in uh, Dallas, Texas, where this front was kind of situated over earlier this afternoon. Lots of rain and we actually saw a lot of delays associated with this rain over the Dallas area. Up in New York though, just a little red guy, he has no delays. The only person that is delayed is Tallahassee or is Texas, Dallas, Texas. For tonight's forecast, though, we're dropping these down quite nicely. 40 degrees in Denver, 48 in Salt Lake City, and the lows will be dropping as well in Tallahassee as we bring things back home. But for tomorrow, we're going to be seeing some warmer conditions. Phoenix being our hot spot, sitting at 91 degrees. Billings looking quite nice, too. Sunny skies up there for Billings, 79 degrees. Seattle rainy, which is very uh, usual for its time of year. And Tallahassee will be seeing the rain tomorrow, that high of 83 will be remaining in the picture and be looking quite nice. So we're going to go ahead and send things over now to Jonathan, who's going to take a look with us around the local. Thank you, Nikki. There's a lot going on. The, really, the big story, and I can't drive this home enough, is this squall line pushing in from the lower Mississippi Valley. But right now, we're dealing with southerly flow coming in from the Gulf. And that's bringing a lot of moisture, a lot of energy to work with from the Gulf, from the Gulf down up into southern, uh, northern Florida and southern Georgia. We had that. Uh, tornado warning over in Calhoun County not too long ago, about an hour ago, just off to our west, to the west of our area. But for the rest of us, we're going to get some rain and a couple of clouds, and it's going to become a lot cloudier as we head through the overnight hours. So don't expect those temperatures to drop a whole lot tonight. But temperatures will be dropping back towards seasonal levels as we get past this front on Wednesday. Storms will begin after the 2 o'clock hour for most of the area. And that's when we're going to start talking about that squall line energy off towards our west. And then strong thunderstorms begin right after sunrise and into the early afternoon hours. But the good news is we will be turning back towards seasonal conditions and sunny skies as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Here's how it's going to look in the temperatures. And these wind barbs, the longer the wind barb, the more wind there is. So winds are going to be, in general, between 10 and 15 uh, miles per hour tomorrow afternoon. And there is a threat for some severe wind, wind tomorrow after, tomorrow early afternoon as the squall line passes by. Again, there's a low threat of that strong wind passing by, but I think really the biggest threat, especially in our western counties, is this flood threat. Some areas could see two to four inches of rainfall in a very short amount of time. Some places could see that in less than an hour in some stronger storms. 
and then our eastern counties and most of us are going to see one to three inches of rainfall uh, again possibly in a short amount of time we could see some of that some of those rainfall totals rack up rather quickly so if you're going to bed tonight make sure you turn those weather radios on before you head in to bed uh, because some of this severe weather could happen before you wake up tomorrow morning and into the afternoon and this is one thing I don't recommend whatsoever because if you've got to head out in the water tomorrow stay close to shore but if you've got to head out uh, I really, really wouldn't recommend it if you don't have to go out 20 to 25 knots. It, the wind's there, going to blow you right across the gulf. Five to seven feet waves, really going to knock you around if you have to go out. I really wouldn't recommend it, though. Tonight's forecast, we're looking at 73 degrees for tonight. It winds, again, gusting 5 to 10 miles an hour, picking up, up to uh, 10 to 15, possibly 20 miles an hour uh, tomorrow at early afternoon with thunderstorms moving through the area from west to east between sunrise and let's say three to four o'clock in the afternoon, depending on where you are. Farther west, we'll see that those rain showers and the thunder rolling through earlier in the morning. 82 degrees where, where we'll get to. If we see a little bit more sunshine, we could see some stronger storms in, in a couple more degrees on that temperature. Looking at the next seven days, we're looking like this. We're looking great as soon as we get past these thunderstorms on Tuesday and into early parts of Wednesday and then cooling off into the uh, low 50s after this front passes by. But we've got more tropics to talk about than we've had over the last month. Absolutely, Jonathan. And it's, it's turning active. It's our sixth hurricane of the season that we've got out there now. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. First of all, we're going to show you what's been going on in history uh, in the tropics. We do this most of the time. And uh, right now in 1954, it was Hurricane Hazel that's out there. Right. That's right. Hurricane Hazel hit the Bahamas what was it, uh, 60 years ago today, and it was the deadliest storm of that time and the costliest with over 1,000 people dying and almost $500 million in damages across Haiti through the Bahamas and even up into Canada, if you'd believe it. Oh, man, it's just incredible. But yeah, today it was just east of Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got a storm east of Florida today, but uh, Hazel got up to a Category 4 hurricane. That's a pretty major hurricane. That's right, digging up to Category 4. It was a really funky one, too, because once it got up into the States, it merged with a cold front before it hit Canada, where it did cause a lot of damage there. Well, there's no chance of Hurricane Frost right now, but we do have a 100% chance of Paxton for around Florida. We do have 100% of Paxton for around Florida. For a 24-hour temperature change, you can see that in Tallahassee, it is minus 7. So between today and tomorrow, we are going to be 7 degrees lower than what we are right now. So that is a big sign of relief for us because... These hot, muggy temperatures are not going to be sticking around for much longer, which is great. But for the rest of Florida, it's not varying so much, except for Fort Myers, Fort Myers where it is 11 degree drop between now and tomorrow. Currently, it is 81 degrees in Tallahassee. It's 80s around the, around the region. So we are still experiencing those summer-like temperatures, but these temperatures will continue to drop between now and tomorrow due to the cold front coming through, bringing in a lot of rain and moisture, uh, cooling us down as well. For South Florida, we do have some southerly flow in this area, bringing in some showers, and those will be dissipating throughout the night, but most of the rain will be sticking to the Panhandle region of, and northern regions of Florida due to the front, and also due to the southerly flow off in the Gulf Coast, bringing moisture up into Tallahassee, and a little bit of moisture in the eastern parts of our counties as well. And in for the rest of our region, we had that southerly, southerly flow yet, yet again, and also the front associated, the storms associated with the cold front, which is coming towards us right now, bringing in those, uh, this, uh, the potential for severe weather, which we have been experiencing in the western parts of our, of our area. And again, we have the southerly flow bringing in all this moisture into our area along with the cold front. The water vapor, you could see, you could. You can see the moisture in the Gulf of Mexico quite clearly right around here, and it's coming up, bringing in some moisture. And you also see the moisture associated with the front right there. And behind that front, you do have a little pocket of dry air, not as much as our last cold front, but it's still there nonetheless, so we will be feeling that relief from this moisture and this humidity. With the front, strong thunderstorms are associated with it. And as it passes, you have nice, sunny, sunny, sunny skies and that will be a clearing up for us for Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, game day against Notre Dame is going to be nice and cool for us, which is going to be fun and fantastic, a nice football day weekend for us. Hopefully we win. Who knows? But tonight we do have 75, but 
those temperatures are quite nice for us in Tallahassee. And for tomorrow, we have 83. So it is a little warm, a little cooler than what we have been experiencing. And we have those high threat of showers for tomorrow, but they will be clearing up going into uh, Wednesday. But after Wednesday comes, we will be having a lot nicer temperatures. So besides the Seminoles, our temperatures are going to be winning as well. But we are going to be throwing this on over to Josh with some information on the tropics. Yes, Paxson. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have that one, uh, now our sixth hurricane of the season out there in the tropics. And uh, yeah, we've had seven named storms so far this year. And six of them have become hurricanes. That's four more than we had last year uh, this time of year. So we got, right now we've got Faye and Gonzalo. Actually, Faye is now beginning to leave. It's uh, pretty much finished now. It's going out to sea. It's no longer in tropical either. Gonzalo, however, is down in the Caribbean by Puerto Rico, Antigua, just pounding him today, and has now become a hurricane. Sustained winds of 75 miles an hour. We'll get to that in just a second. But so far, we're down in Gonzalo, and that's about it. We haven't gotten any further than that this year in 2014. Here's that satellite of what's left over with Faye as she continues to move out to the east, out to sea, long gone. No worries here. It did do some stuff in uh, Bermuda uh, this past weekend, but now it's going out to sea, nothing but the fish is there. Now, if we shift over to Gonzalo, now a Category 1 hurricane, we have a northwest at 10. So this storm is going to continue to stay to our east in time. So winds of 75 miles an hour, gusts up to 92. Minimum central pressure at 984 millibars. Take a look. Here's the forecast track. Like I said, it's going to stay east of our area, Category 2 possibly soon. But We'll have to watch to see if it becomes our second major hurricane. We've had one major hurricane this year so far. Here's that satellite for uh, Gonzalo. You can see really just pounding Antigua and now just east of Puerto Rico. Hurricane watches in effect there in Puerto Rico as well. Here's the water vapor imagery across the so uh, southeast of the U.S. We get that cold front just to our west. That's moving east in our direction. But mainly you can see just dry over to our east. The greens are representative of that uh, upper level moisture. So we're going to start to get to that soon, starting tonight and tomorrow, where we could see a possibility of severe weather, but definitely that rain ahead of time as well as we get into early morning hours tonight. So you might hear a couple rumbles of thunder tonight even. Here's a close-up. You can see plenty of moisture coming in from the south uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. We had a tornado warning just before the show started, and really that's where all moisture is coming from in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to continue to come into the night, and eventually everything from the west moves in starting tomorrow. Here's a satellite and radar. You can see all the rain in the Gulf of Mexico, showers popping up in our general area, and again, it will continue to increase in coverage tonight, especially into tomorrow. Here's the 24-hour temperature change. We're seven degrees below where we were yesterday. Again, that's because of the clouds sticking around. We had more sunshine uh, yesterday and over the weekend especially. 81 right now in Tallahassee, 83 in Valdosta, 75 in Panama City, 70s to our west, right where that front is approaching and where all the rain is, of course. That's headed our direction for tomorrow. 75 for tonight, muggy, because that front's moving in. we got plenty of moisture in the atmosphere. 69 in Valdosta, 67 in Jacksonville. And for tomorrow, mainly the 80s, with the cloud cover really taking control tomorrow, and plenty of showers and thunderstorms, high chance of rain. And i got to tell you, uh, Daniel, Compared to last year, where we were last year, we were dealing with, actually just finished with Karen, and Lorenzo was going to end up coming up later on in October. So it's much different from um, last year compared to this year. Yes, this is really good news. Over the past 10 years, it's been really bad for hurricanes, which is great news for us, so that means we don't have a whole lot of problems here. Absolutely, and yeah, last year we only had two hurricanes, and they were already finished this time of year. So we had one major hurricane, like I mentioned, Edward, and then uh, now we're with Gonzalo. Um, but... So we've talked about these six hurricanes this year, but I want to give you a fact. What's that fact? So Florida, that's all we care about, right? Uh, take this number, 3,273 days since the last hurricane and major hurricane to hit the state of Florida. That's crazy to think it's been that long since we last had a major hurricane. You know, so what's that been like? The last one was probably 2005 or 2006, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Hurricane Wilma, 2005, came out from the Caribbean in October. So isn't that ironic? We're that in October, crazy. we're talking about Wilma for our last hurricane to hit the state of Florida. Right now, we got no worries here. Mm -hmm. That was also a W storm, you said, too, wasn't it? 2005, very active season, very active season in 2005. Yeah. What but... we got out there local right now? Right now, we're looking at this cold front. Like, you've been hearing all day, you see this cold front going right across Mississippi right now. And there's some dry air behind it, which is what we'll be expecting 
well, over the next few days here, you see we're going to have this pass through tomorrow. We have this unrelated mess coming up from the Gulf right now. Really not going to be uh, with the cold front, but it will be passing us, and what, all that rain tonight will have for um, is associated with that front. But like you see right now, this is what we have going on. Brandon was talking earlier about all those watches and warnings. Those are just about passed with this system. I'm not sure if we're going to have a whole lot of uh, you know, watches and warnings tonight with this, but there's going to be a big chance of rain then also for that front. Satellite and radar, you see the storm just come up off the Gulf and sit right on top of us. Just lots of clouds out there right now. And look at the radar, it's pretty much the same message there. All where those clouds where you still see all this rain. You see right here is where the big issue was earlier. You see right about there is where they had that tornado touchdown over there just east of Tallahassee, or just west of Tallahassee. And for our current temperatures, we're at 81 degrees here, just about the same everywhere else. You see we have uh, um, some spots within the 70s, a little bit in the 80s. So it's all looking good there all across the area. Well, we're going to take a look at it, this front that's going to be coming through tonight. And you see that it's just going to produce a lot of strong thunderstorms. And it'll be here for tomorrow also as we put this into motion going into tomorrow afternoon. You see it's going to be sunny skies as we get into Wednesday in the morning. But it'll be, like I said, that dry air will really start coming in then. And we're going to go ahead and look at what's going to happen with the satellite and radar. This, is, this has been the strongest cold front we have seen this year so far. And there's probably going to get worse from here. You see how strong and defined this is. They've had a lot of flooding over in Texas and Louisiana and even some of Mississippi right now, too. And for tonight's forecast, we're going to see a low of 73. Those storms, again, starting after 2. And it's going to be about the same for there also. You see lower 70s all there, but... It's going to be dropping big time after that front passes. You're going to see these temperatures as we get into tomorrow's forecast. 82 is our high for tomorrow, and that's just going to keep getting lower and lower. Lots of thunder. We have lots of. It's going to be real windy. So unfortunately for us, that's not terribly good news. But good news, if you notice the beach forecast, there was a lot of surf over there. And uh, in Pensacola, I got a report earlier today where they were talking about surf at up to eight feet, if you believe it. And we're going to be expecting the same in Tallahassee for now, but. As we get into our last little bit of the show, we're going to go on and see what else are we going to talk about, Josh? Well, I know with no Florida hurricanes, you know what that means. We can definitely enjoy the fall-like weather coming and eventually the game on Saturday. I'm pumped for the game on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a great game against Notre Dame. We're ranked two, they're ranked five, correct? Two against five. It's a prime time game. Get ready. Okay, so if we're going to make a guess on the score, what if I were to say we will win 50-2? to two? What That's pretty gutsy. That? That's pretty gutsy. Yeah, let's stick with that then. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty gutsy. I like that score because we win. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, a tough, it's tough to call games like this. They, they're, as we've seen the past two weeks in college football, it's very, um, like the weather, very unpredictable. Yeah, would you have guessed Mississippi State jumped us number one starting off unranked? They're playing pretty good. They are playing really good. I give it to them. They're pretty good. But FSU, I, I got to stick with my nose, man. Stick with my nose. Go nose all the way. Yeah. Cannot wait for Saturday. We're going to beat Notre Dame, man. I'm telling you right now. We're yeah. going to beat Notre Dame. It's good to stay undefeated there. Well, we're looking at our seven-day forecast. You see 90% chance of rain tomorrow. You can pretty much count on it there. Wednesday, there's a slight chance in the morning if the cold front decides to slow down a little bit. And you see after that, it's going to get a little bit cooling off, and it's going to be in the lower 80s through Thursday through the weekend, and the Monday might start heating up just a little bit more. Again, I don't see any 40s, though, compared to that last front. The last front, we had 40s. You know, not going to be as cold, but it's definitely a, a nice cool down compared to our summer-like weather we've had the past days over the weekend. Yeah, well, make sure that you uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and you can also watch us anytime at livestream.com slash FSUweather. Absolutely. Just watch us anytime, and, uh, of course, Again, just watch out for the storms tomorrow. Have the umbrella handy, the poncho even, because it's going to get windy, of course, ahead of that front. Southerly wind. So uh, that's it for tonight's show. Ha hope you enjoyed it, all the tropics and severe weather. I'm student meteorologist Joshua Rivas. And I'm Daniel McFarlane. Everyone have a great evening.